Welcome to Enniskillen, the historic county town of Northern Ireland's County Fermanagh. A delightful market town home to centuries of history and surrounded by beautiful countryside, there's a lot to see on a visit to Enniskillen. And on this walk around the town centre, we'll pass by an array of captivating landmarks, from the Grand St Macartan's Cathedral to the intriguing Butter Market, the majestic Fort Hill Park, the town's significant war memorial, the unusually named Pegger the Bull Lane, and many more. All of that is to come over the next half hour as we make our way through the heart of Enniskillen. But we begin our walk in front of the town's oldest and most famous building of all, Enniskillen Castle. A formidable fortress with more than 600 years of history, Enniskillen Castle is thought to have begun life sometime around the year 1415, when a much smaller fortification, a square tower house, was built in this strategic location, beside a narrow crossing point of this river, the River Anne. The Anne, the second longest river in Ulster, served as an enticing natural defence for the castle's founder, one Hugh Maguire, a member of the powerful local Maguire clan. For a long time, the Maguires were kings of Fermanagh, and Enniskillen here was their seat of power. Their castle was occasionally raided and even seized by rival Irish clans, including the O'Donnells and the O'Neills, but the Maguires were able to retain power for the most part, and they gradually expanded their fortress here over the decades. But the Maguire's castle isn't the castle that we see today, as it was demolished by none other than the Maguires themselves. In 1602, the Maguires decided to destroy their historic castle to prevent it from falling into the hands of the English, who were beginning to establish a dominant presence across Ireland at the turn of the 17th century. Having long profited from the strategic benefits brought by this castle by the River Anne, the Maguires didn't want the English capturing it and using it as a base to cement power over the region. Though, unfortunately for them, English forces did manage to take control of Enniskillen when they captured the castle ruins just five years later, in 1607. After the capture of Enniskillen, the Maguires were suppressed by the English, who, from 1612, began to develop this place as a major market town, populated mostly by settlers from England and Scotland, Enniskillen, therefore, being one of the many towns which became a part of the plantation of Ulster. It was also during this time that the present Enniskillen Castle was built, on a much larger scale than the former Maguire stronghold. And its most famous feature is without doubt the eye-catching water gate here, the turreted structure which looks out over the River Anne, built in 1609 as a rather ominous defensive tower. But despite this redevelopment by the English, parts of the Maguire's original medieval castle do remain, in the lower parts of the castle keep just behind these walls which is open to visitors as part of the Enniskillen Castle Museums, one of the town's very best tourist attractions. Now, we won't venture inside the castle on this walk, but if you do visit the castle museums when you're in Enniskillen, don't forget to come down to the riverside just here. It's one of the most picturesque spots in town, and a great place to get an idea of Enniskillen's rather unusual geography. We know that the River Anne was of great strategic value to those who held Enniskillen Castle. But the river actually flows around the town centre on two sides, creating a tiny island on which the modern town of Enniskillen exists today. Of course, in the 21st century, Enniskillen, which is home to just under 15,000 people, has spread beyond the confines of the island that we're on here. But this unique geography is also believed to have played a part in the origins of the name of what is Ireland's only island town. The name Enniskillen derives from the Irish Inish Cethlan, which literally means the island of Cethlan. According to Irish mythology, a tiny island in the River Anne, just to the east of the main island of Enniskillen, which we're currently on, once served as a place of refuge for an Irish heroine named Cethlan the queen of the supernatural race of warriors known as the Fomorians. Cethlan, herself a fierce warrior, is said to have one day been wounded in battle by an arrow, and so she swam away from the fight to seek refuge on that small island, where she died. Now, while the battle in which Cethlan was injured may be the stuff of legend, Enniskillen Castle has been at the heart of plenty of military conflicts through time, 
most famously being subjected to three sieges in the space of just under two years in 1594 and 1595, when once rival Irish clans united to take the castle back from the English, who'd briefly captured it in 1594. Those three sieges eventually resulted in a victory for the clans, who then demolished the old castle before Enniskillen fell to the English once again just over a decade later. And they fought another siege against the resurgent Maguires in 1641 to retain control of their new island fortress. But there's also a wealth of much more recent military heritage to be found in and around Enniskillen Castle as just here on the outskirts of the old fortress, we find a grand obelisk dedicated to the locals who lost their lives in a rather more recent war, the Second Boer War of 1899-1902. By this point in history, Enniskillen and Ireland as a whole had become a part of the United Kingdom, with many of its residents serving in the British Army all over the world. And just here beside it, we find a memorial plaque featuring the names of ten men from County Fermanagh who were awarded the Victoria Cross, the highest award for bravery in the British Army. Now, the reason that there are so many military monuments here by the castle is that in later years, this fortress was repurposed as a military barracks belonging to the British Army, known simply as the Castle Barracks. The barracks can trace their heritage back to 1688, when Enniskillen, still predominantly inhabited by Protestants, descended from English and Scottish settlers, was garrisoned, as the townspeople took up arms against the forces of King James II, who had just been deposed from the throne by William of Orange. Enniskillen, along with the walled city of Derry, was one of two major centres of Protestant resistance against James II. Although unlike Derry, Enniskillen did fall to James's forces in 1689, though it was the last town in Ulster to do so. This period saw the birth of two local military regiments, a cavalry and infantry regiment collectively known as the Inniskillings, and they were the precursors to the regiments of the British Army which called Enniskillen's castle barracks home during the 19th century before they eventually moved away in 1875 to a larger, more modern facility in Omar in neighbouring County Tyrone. But while they moved away, the barracks remained in operation for nearly 80 years afterwards, serving as home to a number of smaller regiments, and also leading the development of this area of Enniskillen, once upon a time a social and economic centre of the local community. Just up ahead beyond the junction is Queen Street, once upon a time known as Barrack Street, for obvious reasons. And historically, it was here that the wives and families of the men serving in the barracks lived. With the significance of the local regiment in town, this area therefore became a major centre of population, with a dense collection of shops, houses, workshops and more developed to serve the people living here. Nowadays though, this part of Enniskillen isn't quite as vibrant as it once was, because given its links with the barracks at the end of this street, the local community began to move away, when the barracks were eventually decommissioned in 1950. However, there's still plenty of bustling areas to be found in modern day Enniskillen, with the heart of the town's economy and social scene located a little further inland along this street, the main road running across the middle of the island. It's along this road that we'll pass by most of Enniskillen's main landmarks, and an endless row of shops, pubs and more. But at this point, the street is known as Darling Street, lined by a collection of houses and a few colourful historic buildings. For example, hoving into view just up ahead on the other side of the street is an eye-catching blue building. Today it's the home of the town's branch of the Ulster Bank, but the building is more than two centuries old, as it was originally built around the year 1800 as the County Hospital, the central medical facility in Fermanagh. However, this small hospital was relatively short-lived, as a newer, much larger County Hospital was built soon after on the edge of Enniskillen, and so this building was converted into a bank in 1875. And just beside it, there stands yet another colourful landmark, the eye-catching Methodist Church which was built in 1867 and is today well known for its striking pink and yellow facade here on Darling Street. 
The church is the place of worship for the town's community of Methodists, who have a history in Enniskillen dating back to 1793, when the very first Methodist chapel was built just a street away by Wellington Place. But of course, like many historic population centres in Northern Ireland, there's a wealth of different churches belonging to different denominations in Enniskillen, many of which are concentrated around this point, where Darling Street becomes Church Street just up ahead. Now, in the modern day, the majority of Enniskillen's population is from a Catholic background, about 64% according to the 2021 census. And here, we find the town's main Catholic church, St Michael's, which, as we see it today, dates from 1875, and it's one of the largest churches in Enniskillen's town centre, with its long nave looming large over the riverside below. But the striking Victorian church that stands here today was actually a replacement for an older, smaller Catholic church that was built on the same site back in 1803, directly across the street from Enniskillen's main Protestant church, which is the oldest place of worship in town. As we mentioned earlier, the modern town of Enniskillen started out life as a plantation town in the early 17th century, populated mostly by English and Scottish settlers, almost all of whom were Protestants. As such, Enniskillen became a major centre of the Protestant faith in Ireland, the town's passionate defence against King James II in 1689 being a major example of this. But this church served as the greatest physical symbol of the historic strength of Protestantism here. This is St Macartin's Cathedral, once upon a time known as St Anne's Church, and it was originally founded exactly 400 years ago in 1623, when the modern town of Enniskillen was beginning to establish itself. But despite that lengthy history, the rather large cathedral that we see today isn't 400 years old itself. It was actually built a little under 200 years ago in 1842, after that original 17th century church had become structurally unsound. The first of the many churches at this point in town, the reason that St Macartin's Cathedral was built right here is because this is the highest point of land on the island of Enniskillen, ensuring security for the town's holiest building in the event of any attacks from the outside. But just across Church Street, we find a narrow alleyway which slopes back down from this highest point in town, and it's known by a rather unusual name. This is Pega the Bull Lane, a name which possibly derives from the fact that there was once a bull living on open land here. But it's more commonly thought to have been named after a local woman called Peggy, or Pego, who either lived or had a stall at one end of the lane, and was well known as a keen thief of bullseye sweets from a shop across the road. However, as we can see from this sign, the lane actually has two names, Bank Lane being its official title. Locals may have called it Pega the Bull colloquially, but, as we wipe that pesky raindrop off the camera lens, it was for a long time marked on maps as Bank Lane, simply because there was a branch of the provincial bank located at the top of the lane here. There's a bit more logic to that than the rather mysterious origins of Pega the Bull, the truth of which we'll likely never uncover. But it makes for yet another intriguing piece of local heritage on Enniskillen's central street here. Now, as we make our way away from St Macartin's Cathedral and the highest point of land in the town centre, you might notice that the land is already beginning to gradually slope down into a small hollow that exists in the middle of the island. Historically, this depression in the local terrain was best known as the site of a large sewer that ran across the centre of Enniskillen, with all waste from the higher land around it sliding down to be taken out into the River Ayrn. But today, the hollow is famous for lending its name to one of Enniskillen's most beloved pubs, Blake's of the Hollow, which we can see just across the road in red. Opened more than 125 years ago in the Victorian era, Blake's of the Hollow is one of the oldest pubs in all of County Fermanagh, and it's well loved by locals and visitors alike for its traditional interior, allowing you to pop inside and immediately be transported decades back in time. From the depths of the hollow, we can turn around and look back up towards the churches, which now tower above us from their high ground. But there are plenty more ups and downs to be found as we continue our walk through central Enniskillen. Just across the road from Blakes of the Hollow, meanwhile, you'll find another historic local bar, 
simply named Charlie's, which takes its name from Charlie Burns, patriarch of the Burns family, which has been running the bar since 1944. At the time, Charlie Burns made a living serving American troops stationed nearby at Castle Archdale during the Second World War. And the bar that remains today is still in family hands, again serving locals and visitors alike. Walking off the high street around Charlie's Bar, and we find ourselves on the small Market Street, which was interestingly known for a long time as Schoolhouse Lane, simply because there was a school located here. No visible evidence of the old school remains today, though here on the right we can see a newly painted mural of the actor Adrian Dunbar, born here in Enniskillen, and depicted in this mural in his role as the Superintendent Ted Hastings, from the hit police show Line of Duty. But having walked down what is now known as Market Street, we arrive at the Enniskillen Butter Market, one of a number of historic markets that were once located in this area of town. Though originally situated in the heart of town on the Diamond by the Town Hall, where we'll head towards shortly, the town's Butter Market, which sold dairy products, as well as its Corn and Potato Market, moved down to this area in the 1830s, closer to the River Erne on the other side of the island. Today, Enniskillen's historic town centre markets are sadly long gone, but the old butter market complex here was delightfully redeveloped in the 1990s as a centre for local artists and craft producers, where you can find some interesting goods for sale that you certainly won't see back up on the high street. With a bit of drizzle in the air at the moment, the butter market is a little quieter than usual, though the outdoor eating areas and lovely little cafes are a really nice place to stop and put your feet up while you're exploring Enniskillen. But the recently redeveloped butter market is also an interesting place to compare and contrast modern Enniskillen with its lengthy history. Once upon a time, Enniskillen's butter market was the central trading venue for dairy producers from across County Fermanagh, a heavily agricultural region. And so this purpose-built venue was a site of real economic significance at the time. Decades later, the local butter market declined in importance. But these buildings, many dating from as long ago as 1835 when it moved here, have remained in situ, now home to an array of artisan workshops showcasing the best of local produce. And just here in the corner of the butter market, we find one particularly impressive piece of local artwork a model of an old steam engine named Myrtle. Created by Enniskillen local Gordon Johnson, locally known as the Magical Imagineer, the train was built using authentic copper and brass materials, while its two big rear wheels were taken from a piece of farm machinery. Gordon Johnson, a prolific model maker, built Myrtle as a way to raise money for charity. But the train has also lived on to become a beloved local landmark, once housed in Enniskillen's quirky railway museum and barber shop, and today on full public display in the butter market. But as we now make our way out of the butter market, despite the proud railway heritage that you'll find in a number of spots around this town, you can no longer visit Enniskillen by train. In fact, there are no longer any active railway stations in the whole of County Fermanagh. Of course, that wasn't always the case, and Enniskillen was served by its own railway station for just over a hundred years between 1854 and 1957. For most of that period, the town station was located just to the east of Fort Hill Park, where we'll be finishing our walk later on, and it stood as the terminus for three separate railway lines, originating in the cities of Derry, Sligo and Dundalk. As such, you could once upon a time get to three of Ireland's coasts by direct train from Enniskillen here, and the town served as an important hub for those travelling from the rural west of Ireland to major ports such as Belfast. Not just people, but cattle too, which were destined for export to the rest of the UK at the time. Given the town's location right in the middle of County Fermanagh, Northern Ireland's most sparsely populated county, the eventual closure of the railway to Enniskillen was a blow to the town's fortunes, as well as those of farmers in the surrounding region. Though Enniskillen today still remains an important transport hub for buses travelling across this part of Ireland. But now, you'll have noticed that we've just returned to Enniskillen High Street, which climbs its way back up out of the hollow to another point of high ground on which there stands Enniskillen's Town Hall, overlooking what's known as the Diamond, historically the centre point of the civilian town of Enniskillen. 
Laid out in the early 17th century during the plantation of Ulster, the diamond was once upon a time the site of local markets, as well as military barracks and the town's stocks and pillory, the venue for public punishments. Today, all of those historic landmarks are gone, replaced with modern shops and this, Enniskillen Town Hall, built in 1901 on the site of the town's old market house. A really rather grand late Victorian building, the Town Hall is best known for its striking clock tower, which features just beneath the clock face two statues of soldiers from the local Inniskillings regiments, yet another reference to this town's rich military history. Much of the Town Hall today remains as it was when it was first built, though the statues were recently repaired in 2015 after long-term weather damage, while the floor of the main lobby inside was actually destroyed back in 1972 when the building was targeted by a bomb during the early years of the Troubles. Unfortunately, as you'll no doubt know, this wasn't the last time that Enniskillen fell victim to a bomb attack. We'll talk more about the devastating Remembrance Day bombing in 1987 when we pass by the site of the incident in a few minutes' time. But the town hall here was targeted once again back in 2003, when an explosive device was planted just outside the building by the Continuity IRA. And although it fortunately only caused superficial damage to the town hall, it unfortunately caused injuries to three local police officers. Again, there's more to Enniskillen's story in the conflict in Northern Ireland, and we'll discuss that shortly. But let's continue making our way down Town Hall Street here, towards the corner of the island. Here, the street is lined by yet more shops, restaurants and more. But in between them, you'll also find some of central Enniskillen's most prestigious commercial buildings, many constructed in the late Victorian era, when this town developed as the only major centre of commerce in County Fermanagh. Bear in mind that there's only one other town in this whole county, that being Lisna Ski, home to around 3,000 people today. And so Enniskillen here was inevitably the place where companies would focus their operations in the region, opening grand outposts like the striking red sandstone bank building that we can see just across the road here. Once upon a time a branch of the Belfast Banking Company, later the Northern Bank and today its successor Danske Bank. Interestingly, the upper floor of this bank included specially designed living quarters for the branch manager. Though when it came to staying overnight in Enniskillen, many more people opted for the building just a couple of doors down the street. Now also home to a bank, this large building was once upon a time the Royal Hotel, one of Enniskillen's most luxurious hotels. Created by merging three large houses, you can tell that the building was once a hotel from the amount of windows looking out onto the street, and from its distinctive covered porch entrance, outside which horse and carriages used to wait ready to transport guests. But if we look yet another few doors along Town Hall Street, we'll find the home of one of Enniskillen's most famous exports, the local newspaper, which has been serving the town for nearly 200 years. Founded back in 1825, it's known as the Impartial Reporter, which is the third oldest newspaper in all of Ireland, still distributing weekly copies across not just Enniskillen, but the rest of Fermanagh, as well as South Tyrone and neighbouring counties in the Republic of Ireland as well. And conveniently for the Impartial Reporter's journalists, their building is located directly across the street from this, Enniskillen's historic courthouse and judges' lodgings. Built around the year 1785, the site on which the courthouse stands has long been a site of local justice in Enniskillen, having originally been home to a small jail in the plantation era, which was later redeveloped into a courthouse. Though today the building has become too small for modern purposes, so it's now used more sporadically, mostly as a centre for legal hearings. And looking back across the road once again, we find Enniskillen's impressive Presbyterian church, built in 1897, and making it four major churches located on the town's main road, and on the island of Enniskillen. We mentioned earlier that the nature of this island town gave it huge strategic benefits when it came to defence, and for a long time there were only two small bridges that gave access onto and off of the island, one on the west side by the castle, and the other here at the end of the town's main street on the east side of the island. Understandably, that bridge was known as the East Bridge, and it was originally built across the River Erne back in 1614, during the earliest years of the modern town of Enniskillen. 
However, that bridge, which was actually a wooden drawbridge, was fairly short-lived, as it was replaced in 1688 by a modern stone bridge, which still exists across the Aisne to this day. Since modified and widened, the original stone bridge forms the core of this modern river crossing, though it was originally designed both as a river crossing and as a defensive structure, linked by tunnel to a major gun battery on nearby Fort Hill Park which played a major role when the town was fighting off the forces of James II just one year after it was built, in 1689. In a couple of minutes' time, we'll walk up to the top of Fort Hill Park, where we'll reach the end of our walk. But before we do so, we now find ourselves walking past the site of one of the deadliest bombings in Northern Ireland during the Troubles. Just up ahead in front of us, you'll notice the County Fermanagh War Memorial in the middle of the road originally erected in 1922, and which pays tribute to locals who lost their lives in the First and Second World Wars. And it was around this war memorial on the 8th of November in 1987 that a crowd of people gathered to pay their respects during the town's Remembrance Day service. As part of the service, a contingent of British soldiers were due to make a parade towards this memorial and it's claimed that they were the target of a bomb planted by the IRA just a few feet behind the statue, where the modern Clinton Centre, the cream-coloured building on the right, stands today. But when the bomb went off, it created a blast that caused the wall of the town's old reading rooms to collapse onto a crowd of people who were waiting for the ceremony to begin. And the explosion caused the deaths of 12 people, 11 who were sadly killed on that day, and one more, Ronnie Hill, who died in the year 2000 after 13 years in a coma after the bombing. As well as the deaths of 12 members of the local community, 60 others were injured in the attack, which proved not only to be one of the worst bombings during the Troubles, but also a crucial turning point in the whole conflict, as public opinion began to turn fiercely against the violence of the IRA's campaign, as well as the bloodshed committed by all over the course of nearly 20 years of conflict in Northern Ireland. Known commonly as the Poppy Day bombing, the incident here in Enniskillen was a watershed moment, with far-reaching consequences in the realm of politics and the conflict itself, but most importantly, in the local community with the loss of 12 locals who are still fondly remembered by the people of Enniskillen to this day. The tragedy of the bombing here in Enniskillen remains one of the worst scars in this town's lengthy history. But as we now make our way up towards Fort Hill Park, we know that there is still plenty to celebrate about Enniskillen, not just in the form of its illustrious heritage, but all of the many fascinating sights that it has to offer in the modern day. But now, as we've mentioned, we've made our way off of the main island of Enniskillen. But this point in the town was no less secure than that famously strategic isle, as what is today Fort Hill Park here was once upon a time, as the name suggests, a fort in itself. When the forces of King James II came knocking during the Williamite War in 1689, a star fort and gun battery were built on top of this area of high ground, providing those defending the town with an immense advantage overlooking any advancing enemy forces. But that was just one brief chapter in this hill's rather long history. And before it was a fort, this was open land, known by various different names. Chamomile Hill, Commons Hill, or possibly even Cow Hill, as it was a place where locals would often bring their cattle to graze. After serving as a fort meanwhile, this hill was eventually converted into a delightful town park in 1836, and it was after this point that a number of intriguing monuments were built right on top of this prominent landform. Designed as a place where people could promenade and relax away from the busy town centre, the developers of Fort Hill Park also added this huge column, built over the course of 12 years from 1845 to 1857, and which is topped with a statue of General the Honourable Sir Galbraith Lowry Cole. For short, it's known as Cole's Monument, and it serves as a tribute to the General who served as the MP for Enniskillen in the House of Commons, and who also became distinguished for his service in the British Army in the Peninsula War at the end of the 18th century when British forces fought against Napoleon's armies in Spain and Portugal. Now, the development of this park and the building of Coles Monument came during a period of growing economic fortunes across Northern Ireland, 
and as such this grand column suggests an image of a pristine Victorian park here in Enniskillen for much of the 19th century. However, the truth is that shortly after this monument was built, Fort Hill Park here actually fell out of favour with locals, possibly because of its steep hill and its location outside the very centre of town. The park gradually became overgrown until the 1890s, when the town commission decided to refurbish it once again as a new pleasure park. In the process, adding this, the Fort Hill Bandstand in 1895, which was dedicated as a mark of gratitude to the then chairman of the town commission, Thomas Plunkett. Described as a little slice of Brighton up here in County Fermanagh, the bandstand is sadly the place where we've now come to the end of our walk around the fascinating town of Enniskillen, which as I'm sure you'll agree is overflowing with riveting heritage and an enchanting and diverse array of local landmarks. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're now looking forward to making your own visit to Enniskillen in future too.